What up fam? Welcome to Skill Tree where we learn how to do just about everything. So as I mentioned in my Plague Doctor episode, link up here, Halloween is my favorite holiday. As such, I've decided to cram in as many holiday festivities as possible. And nothing is more Halloween-y than pumpkin carving. But clever, I hear you say. Anyone can carve triangles out of a gourd. Where's the skill in that? To which I say, be patient. I'm getting to it. So because the YouTube algorithm is scary aware of the things that I like, I've been stuck falling down rabbit holes of videos like these, where people craft these ridiculous sculpted masterpieces from pumpkin in what I can only assume is an attempt to make me feel bad about my artistic abilities, or lack thereof. But since the game of life has really only two roles, that of spectator and those actually playing the game, I figure, what the hell, let's give this thing a shot and level up this skill. Find your muse. So step one of any artistic pursuit, at least for me, is finding a subject matter that inspires you. And to find inspiration for my monster, I turn to perhaps the most obvious place, the monster manual. Right off the bat, I wanted to do the beholder, which is like the poster child monster for D&D. It's awesome and it's spherical, which is great for my purposes, cause you know, pumpkins, but my issue with it were these like eye stalks that come off it that are very much a key part of what a beholder is. Just wasn't sure how I'd work that out in pumpkin. No worries though, because the very next page had the answer I was looking for. Behold, the death tyrant. What a beholder becomes when it imagines of a reality where it exists beyond death. Basically just a badass monoocular skull with wicked teeth. Really cool looking and fairly simple design to carve, I think. Awesome, so now that we have our subject, it's time to choose a pumpkin. So I learned that when choosing a pumpkin for sculpting, there's a couple things you really gotta keep in mind. First is the overall shape. You wanna choose a shape of pumpkin that's gonna complement the subject that you're trying to carve. So for example, you wanna carve a Frankenstein's monster's head. Um, you don't want like a small squash round pumpkin. You want like a tall angular pumpkin because his head is very... You could of course reverse engineer it and just pick out whatever pumpkin you thought looked interesting and then like making shapes in a cloud, see what you see and just kind of carve that out. Whatever artistic method works best for you, I suppose. The second thing to think about, and this is really important, is the thickness of the walls of the pumpkin. Since we're not just cutting out the shapes, but we're actually sculpting it into the meat of the pumpkin, the thicker those walls are, the more material we have to work with. Unfortunately, when you're choosing a pumpkin, there's no great way to tell how thick it is just by looking at it. A good tip though, is if you pick up the pumpkin and it feels a lot heavier than you think it should for its size, um, that extra weight is probably coming from thicker walls. This gorgeous gourd here is the one I picked out for our death tyrant. It's heavy, it's fairly uniform, and it already has a really nice shape for what I wanna make. Okay, so with our inspiration in place and our medium secured, I think it's about time we should be getting started. For this project, I'll be using clay sculpting tools, some picks, a razor knife, and a drywall saw. I have some links in the description below to some of those tools in case you don't have a place to buy them in your area. I'll also be using a spray bottle with a 10% bleach dilution. This is gonna help keep the pumpkin moist and also fight off any of the bacteria from our hands that's gonna to start to rot and eat away at the pumpkin. Start by identifying the best side for your carving. Then, using a Sharpie, I sketch a basic layout of my monster as a starting guide. Once happy with its placement, I began carving the outer shell so as to be able to identify where everything goes. I found this to be super important because I'll need to remove all of the shell on this side and without carving some of the landmarks a little deeper first, my original layout would have been completely lost. With those areas highlighted, I started removing the rest of the shell on this half of the pumpkin. Trying to keep my shavings as even as possible and not dig out any more pumpkin than necessary. With the tough stuff removed, I began roughing in the shape of my death tyrant skull, outlining the temples and cheekbone areas as well as the general eye shape. So I'm not sure if this is how like the professional sculptors do it, but I found throughout this entire process that if I started with really kind of shallow outline of what I wanted and just gradually went a little bit deeper as I went, um, that was a huge help. It allowed me to compensate for any mistakes that I made and I made some mistakes and generally just took all of the stress out of the project. I wanted the bone around the ocular cavity to protrude a little bit. So that means carving everything around it back some. This is still very much roughing it out, so don't mind any hard angles you create. We'll smooth them out later. Next, I moved on to better defining the upper teeth. 
Once pleased with where the teeth were positioned, I began to smooth out the transition from the deeper area around the eye to the upper jaw. I also started to lightly add in some of the details of where the teeth enters the jaw. Again, I'm using this time to just sketch in the shape. Everything will get deeper as I progress and I get more confident that everything is where I want it to be. I then went in and continued to define the cheekbones, as well as sink in the lower jaw a bit. So if you look at a picture of a skull or you feel your own, you'll notice that the lower jaw bone kind of sits in a little bit more. To get that same effect with my pumpkin, I just removed some of the material that's underneath the cheekbones here before I added in any of the definition and carved the shape in. As I went, I continually checked to make sure both sides were as even as possible before I truly locked in the shapes. I also identified where I wanted the chin area to sit, which helped to set the finished length of the entire face. With that length established, I decided those lower teeth were way too high up, so I carved them away. With that looking more proportional to the rest of the face, I used my drywall saw to cut a rough mouth opening. Then used the saw to lock in the placement of the lower teeth. Quick note here, next time I try to do this, I will carve in the teeth like I did with the upper jaw. By actually cutting them all the way to their base with that saw, I made each individual tooth really fragile. So when I went back in to carve more detail, they were actually really prone to breaking. Just FYI. At this point, I began to shape the lower jaw and make the mouth opening have more of a bony jaw shape. Then I went back and deepened the edges to further bring the tyrant to the foreground. Moving back to the upper teeth, I used the saw to separate the tips. Then I began to shape the teeth in more detail. I did this by rounding each one and making the tops of them a little bit deeper. This way they look like they're disappearing into the upper jaw. I also took this opportunity to deepen the space between the teeth. So what I've learned at this point is that sculpting seems to be very much kind of like painting with shadows. The more defined you're able to make these details, the deeper the shadows in them are and the more shape it gives your piece. For some extra detail, I made little recesses in the jaw to show where the teeth are growing from, just like a real skull has. Now I should have done this a bit sooner as not to damage the fragile lower teeth, but at this point, I carefully remove the insides and set them aside for later. I'm a big fan of roasted pumpkin seeds and this sucker gave me a whole lot to work with. Now I wanted the lower teeth to curve inward like shark's teeth do. So I used my razor knife to make points towards the back. Then I rounded them off and removed their square shape so that they gently arc backwards. So I know everything is really orange in that shot and hard to see. So I'm gonna show you with a little bit of clay what I'm talking about. I basically just took a squared off shape like this and remove the corners and this edge to round the whole thing off. Finally, I scooped out the back to give it this vicious looking little hook appearance. Then, just like I did with the top row, I sunk in the details for where the teeth entered the jaw. Now that we're getting close, I decided it was finally time to finish up the eye. Having opened that up, I just went around the cavity, rounding it off and giving it the overall shape I wanted. I then went back over the piece one more time and cleaned up any of the rougher looking tool marks. Finally, I went around the entire outside of the skull to deepen the recess around it and set it completely apart from the background. And check that out, I made that. I sculpted a thing. And for my first foray into sculpting, I'm like over the moon with how that came out. That being said, a jack-o'-lantern's not a true jack-o'-lantern until you light that sucker up. To add to the effect, I decided to use my Dragon Ball from the TMT build link in the corner, for an eye. To hold it in place, I twisted this bit of wire into a loop big enough to seat the ball. Then I stabbed its legs into the inside of the pumpkin to hold it in place. For a light source, I decided to use this LED camping flashlight. I just repeated my twisted up piece of wire trick and made a little perch for my light to sit on. And behold! I think this shall be dubbed the Pumpkin Tyrant. What a beholder becomes when it loves October far too much. Again, having never sculpted before, I'm crazy satisfied with how this thing came out. Now alas, I don't have any airbrushing skills or an airbrushing setup because that would set this thing completely over the top, I think. I think that's, that's definitely a skill to work on for a later episode, right? Airbrushing? 
Anyway, even just as is, I'm just happy that I did this thing, right? Kind of the cool thing about this show, you know, as I'm looking for content, I keep running into things that I kind of have always wanted to try to do, but wasn't sure I'd ever be able to do it. But I'm continually finding that as long as you try and you take your time and you be patient with it, you really can do pretty much anything. Speaking of cool stuff you can do, check out some of these projects that our fellow skill monkeys have been working on. This community is so damn talented. Just look at this stuff. Now, if you want to show off something that you made or you're working on, why don't you join our Discord community and share a picture there? The link to that's in the description below. As always, if you like what you saw, why don't you give me that thumbs up, love, and hit the subscribe and the notification bell so you know when I release new content. And if there's any skills you want to see me cover, why don't you leave it in the comments and I will add it to the list. And no worries, I'll be getting back to the projects on the list soon. I just wanted to have a little bit of Halloween fun while I could. Speaking of which, I should get going. There's like six more of these to carve and Halloween is nigh upon us. In the meantime, keep leveling up, you.